So I'm back here in my pretty ugly desert island scene that I've been using for some of my tutorials, and I wanted to cover some new ground, uh, that being how to trigger or change animations using Bolt as a way to trigger or alternate between different animations. So what you can see here is I've got a very simple uh, windmill here that I've modeled up, and it's animated right now. It is rotating the blades. And yes, there's other ways to do the rotation of the blades. This is a pretty simple animation, but I wanna show this as an example of how to set up an animator and also how to toggle between different animation states. So what I wanna do here is, it may be a little silly, right? We're on desert island, we got a windmill, but what I wanna do is create a trigger uh, a trigger volume around the, the windmill that when my player walks into that trigger it's going to first turn the windmill on so the windmill won't be rotating to start and then if I leave that trigger and go back into that trigger the windmill will change directions and so each time that I get close to the windmill the windmill will change directions so that's what we're gonna do uh, let's go ahead and get started and before we get into uh, the flow macro the first thing I want to do is set up the animator so that we have all of our various states the intention of this uh, tutorial is not to give a thorough tutorial on how to use the animator window, but maybe this will give you some basics. So as you can see here, I've already created my animation. If you don't know how to create an animation, I'll add a link in the description below to a video where I created an animation for the same model. So what I wanna do here, we're gonna need three states. So I'm gonna create a new state, an empty state, and this is going to be our default state. So this is where the system's going to, or where the animator's going to come in. And this is going to have no animation associated with it. And I'm going to duplicate this windmill state. So we're going to have one that goes forward, one that goes backwards. So I'm going to rename this. Forward. That took way too long. And I'm going to name this one backward. I'm just gonna change here in the backward, I'm gonna change the speed from one to negative one so that it goes backwards. Next, I'm gonna set up my transitions. So I'm gonna set up a transition from the empty state here to windmill forward, and then a state to windmill backwards, and then a state going back one more time. And so again, that's gonna create the behavior so that when I start the game, the windmill's not moving. When I get close to it, it's gonna make this transition towards the windmill forward and then make the transition down to the windmill back next time I enter that trigger. And back and forth and back and forth, so we'll be able to change. A little silly, but it works. So what we need to do next is we need to add a parameter that'll help us transition our states. So I'm gonna go up to parameters up here in the top left, click on trigger. Now there's other options here you can use floats, integers, and booleans, but for our purposes, the trigger is going to be what we need. And I'm just gonna call this windmill. Then what I wanna do is click on this transition. I want to unclick the has exit time and press a plus here, and it's gonna automatically select the first parameter because it's the only parameter that I have, so that's good. And what the way the triggers work, we're basically just going to say, hey, trigger this windmill trigger, and it's gonna make this transition. We don't have to worry about whether it's true or false, it just happens. And I'm gonna do the same thing with these transitions down here. I'm gonna add the windmill and windmill. And I'm turning off the exit time. The reason we're turning off the exit time is just to make the transition quicker. That may or may not look the way you want it to. In a lot of cases, you may want to leave the has exit time there, but it can delay the response of the uh, code. Now that we have our animator set up, we're gonna set up our windmill object to get all the pieces working. Now back in our scene, we wanna set up our windmill. We need to add two components to our windmill. So make sure that you selected your windmill. We're gonna go down to add component and we're gonna add a box collider. And I wanna make sure you can see here the box collider in our scene. It's not extending very far beyond the model itself. So I wanna increase that so it's easier to trigger. Uh, and we're gonna do that here with our size. And you can see that our sizes are very odd. And that has to do with up here that our model has a very large scale, 50, 50, 50. And that's just because of how I imported it from Blender. So in this case, I'm gonna make the scale 0.1 and 0.1. And now you can see that our collider is extended beyond the base of the mesh, which is good. Last thing we wanna do with our box collider is set it to a trigger by clicking is trigger. That way the player can walk through it. It's not gonna act as a solid object. Next, we wanna add a flow machine. Because we need a flow macro to determine when the player walks into this volume and then do something from there. And then here in our macros folder, I'm going to create a new flow macro. 
and I'm gonna call it uh, windmill, windmill animations. I'm gonna go back to our windmill and drag and drop the windmill animations macro into the flow machine. Now, the event that we want to trigger this flow macro is going to be the on trigger enter. So I'm gonna right click and look for on trigger. So once again, I'm gonna check the collider. We did this earlier with our collectibles. I'm gonna look for a compare tag. And I just wanna make sure that the object that's coming into this trigger is the player object. I don't want this to trigger if there's a collision with the terrain or some other object in my game. I'm gonna come up here and go to a branch. And again, if that's true, then we wanna do something. If it's false, if it's something else, we don't wanna do anything. So before we can go any farther, let's connect up our flow control so it looks something like that. Now if it's true, what we wanna do is trigger, go back to our animator, we wanna trigger this windmill parameter, this windmill trigger. I know we're using the word trigger an awful lot. It gets used an awful lot in Unity for different things. So let's see what we can find here. We're gonna look for animation or animator set trigger. And there you go. The first one here, we can set trigger by name. You can also do by ID. I'm gonna go with name. So we're gonna flow over here. We want the animator that's on this object, so we're gonna leave it as self. And then we gotta type in the name of the trigger. And again, this is case sensitive, so make sure you get it typed correctly. And that should be all there is to it. So with that done, let's go ahead and see if this works. Now, just to make this a little bit easier to see, I'm gonna split my scene and game views so that here we can see uh, in the scene view, we can see the uh, windmill nice and clearly. So you can see over here, when we get started, the windmill is not rotating. As I approach it, it's not rotating. And then as I get closer, as soon as my player enters that trigger, it's gonna start to rotate. Now, if I walk back out of that trigger and then walk walk back into it, the direction of the windmill changes to go the opposite direction. So there you go, we've used Bolt to alternate between two different animations in an animator using an animation trigger. Hope that was helpful, and I hope you'll join me for my next video.